Hi there, welcome back. Well, I've been uh, working on the switching section of this uh, of the set, primarily these three switches. That's uh, phono, that's uh, tape, and that's the monitor. And uh, in the last video, I noticed that someone had removed the shorting to ground function of the uh, tape switch, and there was a lot of uh, discussion about why that could have happened. There was some really good uh, explanations on the comments, so if you're interested in that, please go and look at those. A lot of very knowledgeable people stepped in, and um, I'm really thankful for that, because there are certainly a lot of people out there that know more about this set than I do, and more specifically about the ways things were done in the 70s than I do. I was a very young teenager back then. Anyway, what I decided to do was I wanted to move on from this uh, preamp stage but I wanted to complete the steps on the preamp, which includes the prim primary switching over here. So what happens here is you've got the monitor, you've got the tape. Tape, these here are all exclusive. So when you latch that one, you unlatch any of the others. So when I have tapes uh, latched in, it's cutting off all the others. Phono clicked in, it's cutting off all the others. And any of the radio sections, uh, FM, shortwave, longwave, and medium wave, they will deactivate the others as well. So this whole thing comes down to one switching section, which is these three over here. More primarily, more specifically, these two over here. So all the switching of the radio, whichever band you're choosing, doesn't happen over here. It happens before that. So I decided to not focus on that. I just wanted to see that everything was getting here and was moving on. There were also those uh, daughter boards on there that had to be done. The um, small ones, the uh, what, the pre-booster or the booster for, for the final audio that goes into the preamp uh, was done in the last video. And in the meantime, I've done the two for the phono. Now, I've tried to test the phono, quite frankly, it's not easy because it requires a very, very small signal. And what I do get, it works, they both work, left and right channel works. But when I try to sample it or test it, I get an incredible amount of hum and you can see it on the scope and it just sounds bloody awful. But um, I know they're working. I've had this before with other amps as well. What I've got here is I've got some royalty free music on the, uh, on the iPad going into the tape. So we'll just, this thing is pretty powerful. The speakers are crappy, they're on the floor, so they sound a bit boomy. Bass. Lots of bass, too much bass. Treble. Got quite a good span. The um, rumble filter and the noise filter. Remove that, put it in. You can hear it on the very low frequencies. It takes off some of the rumble, some of the bass. And the noise just clips off a little bit of the highs. You can just hear that. It takes off that last few highs that can get a bit uh, annoying. But quite frankly, I prefer it without the filters in. It sounds a lot better. You can control the tone you want. The uh, 12 o'clocks are actually pretty good. But obviously that'll depend on uh, the room I'm playing it in and the speakers I'm playing it through. So, what have we got here? Let's have a look at the screen and see where we've got so far. All right, here we are. I've done quite a bit more coloring just uh, before I go on. This yellow down here, not to be confused with that yellow that I'd used previously for the 15 volt line. So just, uh, just to warn you on that. What I've done is really tested all the connections from the uh, sockets out here to the boards. So we've got the phono socket there, 
the tape socket with the record and uh, input and we've got the monitor as well that was all checked so that I wanted to make sure these uh, the function of these switches were working well and what I found here was that the uh, audio gets rooted depending on what you press here if you press phono it roots uh, phono through in other words that switch over there activates if you press tape that one activates and if you press uh, monitor that one activates but when neither tape nor phono are active in other words when you select one of the radio bands it then springs to a default condition where these two blue lines are the signals that are, are traced through and I'll get to that in a second let's just focus on this so if we look at the tape we'd seen where the uh, signals come into first from 3 and 5 they come into here and they go onto the top channel as well into the tape switch that tape switch had that um, that uh, ground removed I have subsequently put it back so that is no longer valid I've put that back for the simple reason that I gave it some more thought and I've read a lot of the comments and the opinion has to the opinion is that it has to do with what sort of tape deck you use here and how you use the monitor and um, for my purposes that's not important what's important for me is that if I put in a line source here it'll go in and it gets short to ground now with the exception I believe of the iPhone and iPad I think all other line sources will be capacitively coupled in other words if I short it to ground it won't really affect the output of the device that I connect on here iPhone iPad I don't know if it's capacitively coupled or not that might be direct coupled in which case you shouldn't do that but if I wanted to change that I'll leave the boards exactly as they are and I can always put a cap over here in other words I can put a 47 uh, microfarad cap non-polarized one of those Nishikon Muse that you've seen where it comes in before it goes to the to the actual switch so I've left that for a future decision I don't think I'll be doing anything in the meantime I've repaired those tracks and what I used is that copper tape which is self-adhesive it's a very minute job to rebuild the traces and you sometimes have better success than others I think this one worked quite well so I've repaired those and I've now got these shorting to ground as well the tape record is simply a signal that comes in if you follow these purple lines or violet it goes to there it goes through a 270k resistor and it comes to here at all times there's no switching here in other words this is the output from this board before it goes into the preamp board so this is the raw audio signal before it gets uh, filtered uh, tone controlled and volume controlled and that goes out there through there and out of pin one and four which is the tape record so that was uh, no mystery the monitor function is something that I really haven't bothered watching too too closely when you press monitor you cut off the other guys it, it actually activates at the same time as phono and tape it doesn't unlatch the other switches but it cuts out the sound and I'm sure that has to do with the uh, three head tape decks and everything else that uh, people have spoken about in the comments but all these connections are fine they are correct there is no error that guy's got to go so I'm happy with the switching and that led me then to look at this from a different perspective I wanted to know where these guys were coming from these blue lines this is the audio from the radio selection and I sort of expected it to go back here for the AM and to the other side for the FM because this FM it's got it's got a uh, stereo demodulator but surprisingly enough it goes up here goes along if you follow the blue lines and it goes into this board 
And this board is actually the stereo demodulator. Now, I, I really don't understand. I understood this IC to be a stereo demodulator, but it might actually have an AF function as well. It's an MC1310. I've got to look more closely as to exactly what that does. But it seems that all the switching between the bands is done prior to this. And then at this point, audio is coming through, whether it's FM, AM. So um, that's the next target, I think. But I do want to see what this guy does. Yeah. And this board has 15 volts coming in. You see that yellow line? That is 15 volts. In this particular case, it comes in and out. Now, this is not the board that I removed. This is the board that uh, sits between the one I removed and the preamp board. So um, it's certainly going to be tackled next. And then we'll see where the actual radio section comes from. And uh, the first thing I need to do is to check that uh, the 25 volts is getting here and also the 15 volts because the yellow line comes in and feeds quite a few points over here. It feeds that IC, it feeds the bias and the circuits around that IC. It also feeds, what is that? That'll be some kind of negative reference or some kind of reference voltage over there. But that's certainly a 15 volt line. So yeah, that's the next step. Okay, the stereo decoder board had two caps, filter cap over here. And there's a 22 microfarad capacitor here, which is uh, part of an RC time constant. It's basically a timer circuit that gives this IC about two seconds to start operation before it sends the signal to the output transistors. Now, this does have, um, it's got filtering, it's got uh, the stereo decoder itself, and the output transistors have another filter stage which uh, takes out any remnants of the stereo tone, the 90, 19 kilohertz and the 38 kilohertz and the, everything else that's generated on here. But ultimately, the output transistors really just amplify, raise the signal a bit higher. We'll see that in a second. Now, I was a bit baffled, as I said, because in the audio selection, where you select between tape, phono and radio, the radio input comes from this board and Radio meaning it can be FM or one of the others, one of the AM bands. So I was a little bit baffled, but um, I've done some reading and I've actually tested it and I'll show you. This stereo decoder creates a stereo signal if there is a stereo signal coming in. The audio signal comes in here from both the FM section and from the AM section. What does that mean? It means that with the AM bands, long wave, medium wave, and short wave, once you've done the decoding and you've got yourself your audio, that is just audio. That's an audio signal. There's no longer a carrier, okay? So that's an audio signal. You amplify that and you can hear it, all right? With the FM, it's slightly different or it can be slightly different. With FM, if you have a mono signal, then what you have is a mono audio signal coming in with no high frequency carrier or tone rather attached. If it has stereo, then what it does is it sends along a 19 kilohertz stereo tone indicator, meaning that there is a stereo involved and that in fact, the signal is bringing with it not only the mono signal, left plus right, but also the left minus right. Um, if you want to look at that, go into the net and, and you'll find a very good explanation or many good explanations as to how the, the uh, stereo is then carried to the decoder board. So the decoder here, or rather this board says, okay, there's an audio signal coming in. Is it, uh, has it got a stereo carrier? No. If it doesn't have a carrier, then all it does is it does some AF amplification on the output, okay? and sends that off as audio, as audio coming from one of your radio channels. Makes sense. If there is a, a stereo indicator, then it says, oh, wait a minute, hang on, I've got to get to work. So this guy gets to work and it produces the left and right stereo signals and sends them off to the um, 
audio selector. Now the audio selector is a stereo selector. So it's actually expecting left and right channels from here. Whether those left and right channels are identical in the case of mono signals, or whether they are in fact a left signal and a right signal of a stereo signal, of a stereo broadcast, it doesn't matter. The switch that we saw in the previous clip just takes two signals, left and right, and passes them on to the preamp and the amplifier, and then ultimately through to the speakers. So this board is not completely tested in that I haven't tested it with, um, with uh, uh, an FM stereo signal coming in. But um, let me show you on the screen and we'll do a quick test of normal audio coming in here. So here we are. This is the board, the stereo decoder board, and the signal comes in here. And as I said, this is an audio signal with or without stereo information on it. Stereo information meaning um, a 19 kilohertz uh, tone indicating that there is stereo and then also a left minus right signal so that this thing can create the stereo signal. But anyway, if you don't have stereo, the signal comes in here. It actually goes up into the IC and the IC looks at this and says, there's no stereo information, I'll pass it through. And it passes it out of left and right, meaning pins four and seven, or five rather, four and five. That audio comes out here, goes through there, through there, this is a filter uh, network here, which uh, removes any existing high frequencies from that uh, audio tone. Now remember, this thing is generating, I believe it does uh, 76 kilohertz, which then divides to 38 and then divides to 19 and detects 19. I'm not going to go into all that. You can probably get a much better explanation on the net as to how this thing works. But there are artifacts of high frequencies on here. And so this is a filter set up on this end and on this end, which removes that. And ultimately what you get is these two signals over here, which is left and right signal, which as I said, could be just simple identical signals, which could be mono if there is no stereo information. Okay. Now this um, IC has an oscillator in it, right? And if you have AM, then there is an advantage into switching off the oscillator completely in this thing so that it doesn't actually add any high frequency um, noise into the signal. And the way that's done is through this resistor here, this network here, I think that's pin 16, is it? Looks like it. You can actually switch that oscillator off and that's done through this section here this switch over here, which is um, that 15 volts coming along here, 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 all the way along here. Carry on, carry on to there. And that is switched on by this switch, which is the FM switch. In other words, if you have AM, there is four, five, that switched on. If you have AM, that's switched on. So I believe I can't see the numbering on here, but ultimately what happens is it either makes or breaks supply. I believe it probably breaks uh, makes supply to this, puts 15 volts on here. I'm not sure how that works. But what it does is it uh, works on the control voltage over here that's switched by the uh, FM switch as well. And that stops the oscillator in there, so you get AM going through. And AM just gets amplified a little bit, all right? Now, why am I leaving this thing in orange? That's orange. I'm not uh, clicking this to green yet because I haven't tested the full function. What I can test is if I input a simple audio signal there and see if it goes through all this out here, and we'll follow that in a second. And uh, I've checked that all these supplies on here, the 15 and the 25 volts are on here. So if I put a simple audio in audio signal into there, I'm simulating that I'm getting audio saved from an AM, from the AM detector stage. And it comes out of here, all of the blue lines. 
Bloody hell, this thing goes on and on. It comes down here, and as we saw before, it goes to that switch there, which is the um, default off state of all the pickup stuff, of the uh, pickup, of the tape. So that's what actually gets through. And we can test that. We can select one of the audio, whether it doesn't matter because we're we're not selecting it between FM or AM at the moment, but we select any of the audio channels, uh, any of the radio channels rather, put in a signal at that point and see what we get out of the speakers. Let's try that. And if we get that, we know that at least for AM, that section is working. Now, according to the schematic, that audio signal, well, that signal should come in on connector 901 pin three, that's 901, then one, two, three, so I'll have to put it on there. And I'll do that once I've uh, prepared this. Now, what I'm simulating is audio coming from the radio stages. So it doesn't matter which one of these I choose, as long as I don't choose um, pickup or tape. As you can see, if I had tape and I choose, say, long wave, I think that's long wave, is it? Yeah, it uh, unlatches this, so I can choose any of those. Let's leave it on that one. Right, now I'm going to connect signal to pin 3. And there we have it, on both channels. So what I've done is I've simulated audio coming, say, from the AM, the moment I've got uh, medium wave selected, and it's going into that uh, stereo decoder board, and it's coming out of the speakers as left and right signal. Identical, obviously, because this is one tone coming in with no stereo information on here. If I choose long wave, no difference. Medium wave, short wave, FM, absolutely no difference. Now, this is a very low level signal. That's why there's quite a bit of noise on there. But if I take it away, that board is working for AF, at least for, for a mono signal. So uh, we can move on now and uh, let's see what we've got to do next. So what have we established? Well, we've got the signal coming in here. Now, where does this come from? We've got to follow that and see <laughs> because ultimately I, uh, I know pretty well where it's coming from, but let's just follow it for argument's sake. From there, it's that signal over there, down here, the brown one. And it comes into here. But this is just the switched signal. Because if you follow this through, it's capacitively coupled to, to the uh, center pin of the switch. And this is the FM switch. So this is choosing between that signal and that signal. And where are those guys? Well, here they are in pink, the two opposite the uh, or adjacent to the brown. So we follow them up through to here, and one of them goes into here, this section. This is the IF amplifier stage, and the other one goes through, carrying on to another stage, which is the FM detector, the ratio detector. So this board over here, which goes all the way to here, you can see the limits, carries on back. It has this FM front end on it, got the um, AM oscillator or the FM oscillator on it. All that stuff is on the dreaded board that I removed. So I have two choices. There's still something else I can check before I get to the dreaded board, and that is to make sure that everything that's connected to it is uh, well connected and functioning. So what I've done is <laughs> I've gone one step back and I've gone to the last section of this board, which is that board at the front where all this switching happens. And then you have this stage over here. Now this is the AM front end. And the AM front end receives a signal here. It's uh, You've got the selection into the input coils or input uh, tune circuit, whether you choose long wave, medium wave or short wave. That gets switched through. There's an actual, uh, actually quite a good description on the on the service manual. I'll uh, flick it up on the screen 
to show you. But uh, it goes through and it gets to this point where, now this is the oscillator, does the same switching business. The oscillator switching, that creates an oscillator signal and that goes up to this transistor which has received the front end frequency, tuned frequency. And this transistor is the mixer stage and then that outputs through that secondary of that uh, IF transformer, really, the IF for AM, okay? Now, <laughs> I've decided to go and finish this board so that I can get this board out of the way and then we're left only with, uh, with the one I've removed. And you know what? It probably isn't going to be a big problem, but um, this reminds me of those parties at high school where you... You'd ask every girl to dance except the one you really wanted to, and you left her for last in case she said no. And I'm doing the same here. It's sort of avoiding what I fear the most. But uh, yeah, well, maybe it's creating suspense in the video series. I don't know. Or it's boring you to tears. I don't know. But anyway, what am I trying to achieve here? I want to, I can actually do a very simple test on here. And the test that I can do on here is to check the oscillator. Now the oscillator is this T202. You can uh, check the switching at least on this because this is a simple FM uh, AM front end. You've got the front end and you tune that to the RF section. You've got the oscillator and you tune that. That capacitor is half of the ganged cap, which is ganged with this one. We won't worry about that top bit. That's for the FM for now. And um, so you can actually test that this is working and see if we get something out of this transistor at least, or even this mixer. I don't believe we'll find the, um, the front end frequency because this is tuned, but it's pretty low level compared to the oscillator. The oscillator is an active signal. The front end is, until it gets to this transistor, mixer transistor, it's a passive signal. So um, I'm gonna check over here, that transistor, see if we can see something akin to what we expect from the oscillator frequency. So let's do that and see if we can at least paint this orange. We don't know if it's green yet because we haven't really uh, heard anything coming through, but at least we could paint it orange. And um, it's one more, one more step towards the dreaded uh, IF amplifier board. Okay, let me set that up. The transistor we're interested in is actually that thing over there. I'm not sure which is the base, which is collector, which is the middle. We'll just touch each one. I should see a, a an oscillator frequency on the scope. I'm not sure how clean it's going to be, how big it's going to be, or how accurate it's going to be, because once you put a probe on here, you do change things. This is another resistor capacitor. That's another tuned circuit you're putting onto a tuned circuit. So it can actually stop it from running, but we'll see what we get. Let's try it. Okay, it's powered on. I'm choosing long wave. What do we get? Okay. Now that is 780 kilohertz. Now remember, the signal we're seeing here is the oscillator, so it'll be the tune frequency plus the IF. And I believe the IF is 460. I actually haven't found it anywhere yet. I haven't looked. But if I tune it now, It's tuning. So the oscillator is working on long wave. Let's try medium wave. That is 1.9, 1.93 kilohertz. And it also tunes quite freely. Let's try short wave. 7.5 megahertz. And it's tuning. So our oscillator section is working at least. We don't know if the front end, the complete front end is working, but we know the oscillator is. And I do know this oscillator frequency is in the right band. We can see it's sort of in the right band as we select the different bands. So I'm confident that this thing has, um, has got an, at least deserves an orange paint. And uh, we can then move on to <laughs> the dreaded board. So I'm going to leave this for now 
uh, leave this video here for now. I've got some more research to do. And uh, then I'm finally going to come back to the IF amplifier. Just one more thing. I have actually been working on the translation of the uh, service manual into English. Now, I did receive quite a few offers, uh, very kind offers, to help translate this for me. But the reason I started doing it myself was twofold. One, with Google Docs, you can actually recognize PDF, do uh, OCR on PDF documents, which means you can then copy them and use something like Google Translate to work with them. But uh, more importantly, I find that when I work on the translations, and I try to create, I have tried to create a fairly comprehensive translation of the instructions here. It helps me to understand the circuit a lot better. Because I look at the uh, German text, which I don't understand much of, I feed it into Google Translate. The result sometimes is total hogwash. I have to go back and look at the circuit and try and figure out what it is they're trying to say. And in so doing, I automatically. <laughs> pick up what's happening in the circuit. So it's a twofold process, which is very beneficial. Now, the service manual they have here is actually, the pages are actually in reverse order. So the translation I've done is one sequential document, uh, starting at the beginning, really, and going through in sequential order. And uh, whatever I've done, I hope to be able to make it available at the end of the series for anybody else who's got the same problem in the future. So we do get a pretty clear explanation. Obviously, there are flaws, but um, it's pretty clear what uh, they're trying to say. And when you look at the circuit and you understand a bit of what's going on, it's actually very enlightening. Now, time for some more research into the, uh, the damsel at the ball, the last one I'm going to ask to dance. And um, I want to thank you all for your patience. I want to thank you for your comments. It is great encouragement to see so many people comment on the uh, on the videos. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to contribute directly to the channel, you can do so on Patreon. The link's at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, and stay safe.